before I start the question, uh, how many of you are in the process of writing a book or want to write a book or have a story in your head and you want to write? Very good. Good. Aap log likhte bhi hain ya sirf sochte hain, likhte bhi hain, right? So you're all in for taking some good tips from Manu on how to write a good book? Great, good. So let's jump into the session, Manu. The first question to you, if I have to ask you the three most important things what makes a book a good book, what would they be? Okay, I think uh, the first uh, is taking care of yourself, okay? For example, uh, say a singer takes care of her throat, okay? She will not have ice cream. I have a rendition tomorrow. An athlete would take care of his energy, his body, his muscles. So what does a writer have to take care of? I think his, his or her mind, all right? So the first thing is to have the mental energy to keep your effort sustained and to be fresh always. So for that, what I would suggest for young people like you is good habits. Don't tire yourself out going the conventional way of being a writer. Don't look at my hair, okay? <laughs> That's just, otherwise I'm a very ordinary guy. So, <laughs> so uh, walk the middle path in other things, okay? Uh, don't go for substance abuse, all these things. Thinking you're a writer, you have to do these things. No, they'll just tire you out. And you'll be burnt out by the time you're 25. Or, or before. Take care of yourself, exercise well, read a lot, hell of a lot. Discuss things with others that are valuable to you, things that are valuable. Don't waste time in unnecessary discussions, in feelings like excessive competitiveness or jealousies, things like that. A, a very peaceful mind can be violent when you sit down to write. That's what you need. So that's the first thing I would say. The second thing is, uh, I think to me uh, personally, is to pursue reading and to not just read like, I want to be a writer, so let me read. For example, I'll tell you, you read, uh, you suddenly came across a book by an author who you did not think is great or who's say second best, not the top line, not uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez or uh, Dostoevsky, somebody a little below that, but you loved the book, pursue that. Pursue what you feel. Don't just go for what is written somewhere or somebody has told you. That's definitely one more. And the third thing I would say is sit down and write. There's nothing else you need to sit and write. So it's like, you know, I have spent a long, maybe years uh, thinking, okay, I need to get this laptop. Writing has to be done on an Apple, you know, MacBook Air. You can't just do it on a Lenovo. Come on. I'll keep that for my other work. Let me get a MacBook. Or, you know, a desk. Or I sit down to write, somebody is yelling, I can't write today, gone. Don't do that. Write bad stuff, it's okay. You're not performing on stage. You can delete it later. But sit down and write. If you don't do that, you will never start. So these are the th three things I would say. That's wonderful start to the session. Three important things to do. So tell us, um, what makes a good book? As a reader, what do you think will excite a reader to read a book. So what are the ingredients, if I may say? Kya masala jata hai a good book mein? Extremely subjective. I mean, uh, a given book is sometimes loved by one and hated by another. Not No middle feelings. Some people just hate what you like. So it's very subjective. But I would say, uh, to my mind, I think a, a book is good if it's only 50% written by the author and he leaves the other 50% to the reader, right? A good book is a book that is written together by the writer and the reader. So in the sense, you don't over-describe, you, you don't under-describe, you bring something to the reader's mind and leave it there. So the reader can, you have to uh, trust the reader's imagination to kind of create uh, what he or she is going to be moved by. You can only just tick off certain things. It's like music, you know. You, you overdo it, it's, it's nothing. It's gone. It's hardly uh, music. So it's like that. So uh, I think it's the right balance that makes a book interesting. How much do you leave unsaid, unspoken? 
but how much do you yet unmistakably hint at so many people for example have asked me what did you mean by this what did you nothing i mean that's you mean what you want to mean <laughs> you want it to mean so don't ask me then i would have written that what i wanted something to mean i would just write that down why would i just leave it so uh, in one of my books for example there is a woman who is just staring out of a window and standing so uh, my wife is a teacher so her uh, fellow teachers some other colleague of hers was asking two of them were asking what was that woman thinking about at that time and i said i don't know i really don't know i don't know that's why i i am i am with you on not knowing so I, i let me guess what she was thinking and you guess too so i think that the extent to which you leave things to the reader makes a book interesting very interesting now let's get to the basics of it usually when you write a story there are four elements to a story there is a plot there are characters there are setting and there is a narration right let's take them one by one let's come to the plot part of it okay how do you build a good plot again in my case uh, everything begins with an idea so i have a central idea which just occurs to me out of some casual conversation a place i visited a situation an occasion i don't know anything at all i just suddenly get an idea for example right now uh, i am working on a novel uh, I, i don't know the name of it yet for now i have called it a tale of not knowing okay because i don't know the name <laughs> so and i have started on it i probably i will change it uh, but i was thinking of the idea of death the thought of death there is this thing in our society that you know if you have lived well you will die well which goes to the extent that you start as people grow older they they think of how well they have lived hoping for a good death you know so that kind of thing uh, that, that's what i call a central idea about death itself it need not be a very serious or morose kind of book can, you can still make it funny and humorous you know so that is what i would start with plot starts with a central idea but after that it depends on you as a writer so there are writers i guess who sit down and first work out the whole plot and only then start for me this idea is usually enough to start writing something and as i write maybe i am uh, many a time i am uh, into the first or second chapter when i come back and sit down and write the plot so uh, the, the the spontaneity of writing sometimes helps with creation of the plot so yeah okay so there are basically two types you're saying in one you structure the whole plot yes. up front yes. in the second you let the plot evolve over time absolutely great yeah. so a uh, one question for the audience here if you are writing how do you get your inspiration like he mentioned the idea or the core idea is the first thing so uh, to be inspired anything can inspire you this room this audience anything can inspire you right so what inspires you where do you get your idea from anybody raise your hands do we have audience mic okay till the mic comes in anybody who is allowed voice can probably say voice should be fine i guess <laughs> let's see anybody anyone yeah. yeah yes great so observing things around us that's wonderful anybody else yeah reading more great wonderful absolutely true yes yeah getting inspired from others work yes excellent <laughs> is dropping yes okay great good another trick question if you have to quickly tell me about a plot based in this room right now what comes to your mind quick thinking a room which is packed full of people there's a session happening right now doors are closed what comes to your mind as a plot manu let me put you in a spot what comes to your mind as a plot to my mind uh, a, a plot i a, a plot is you know forming in my head as when you asked you know it's about an awkward writer with a terrible hairstyle uh, <laughs> who's come some say uh, almost 800 kilometers uh, thinking somebody is going to appreciate this hairstyle 
<laughs> you have it there you know no seriously let maybe me add a layer to it then yeah. but there's a secret to it he doesn't know that somebody in the audience is sitting because that person has a grudge to clear with that author who's sitting on stage and he's plotting a way how to either throw a rotten egg at him or a rotten tomato at him lovely see yes. what do you want like <laughs> Yes, absolutely brilliant. So he is saving himself. He knows somebody will attack him. So he actually has a body double sitting on stage and the real author is sitting amongst the audience. Good. Wonderful. Any more layers coming up? I think it's worth an attempt that. <laughs> yeah. So now you know how does a plot develop and how layers are built around it. Great, good. So let's now move on to the next part of a good book, characters. So how do you build characters, uh, Manu? Characters is tougher definitely it's a deeper thing see the plot can be anything you can if you are a creative person in a shallow sense like i am from advertising so i keep getting funny ideas all the time so that i mean it's it's, it's the way i am that's why i landed there so maybe for plot that is good enough or it goes a long way to just be able to bring plot twists but character is something which will you will understand people the depth of people only through observation and discussions and you know and also uh, i was thinking today you know one thing about i've gone to a lot of these lit fests okay one thing i find is uh, among writers including myself i find that people like me are more comfortable with the uh, lowest of the low guys you know like the cab driver you, you come to the hotel as they greet you inside like some vip we feel uneasy you know writers oh okay chill i'm i'm fine but the cab guy you sit and ask him kitni dur hai sir hotel ka kahan par hai is taraf aata hai oh roads to acche hain idhar idhar pe ha bangalore mein bahut bura roads hai all that when you say they also open up so i find that writers are not executive guys if you know what i mean they are the opposite of that they are typically people who just get down to the lowest level so that others open up their hearts it comes naturally to writers it's not out of any academic drive that they do this or any sense that uh, sense of goal or anything uh, most writers are built in a way as to understand human nature so uh, no reservations i don't show off so that the other guy will open up to me <laughs> you know you understand what i'm saying you you might have already got it when i came in here so it's a, a writer basically has to be very firstly humble secondly down to earth and very uh, inspiring of openness you know forthcoming himself or herself and uh, inspiring that in others also only then only when other people really reveal about themselves will you understand character that's wonderful so he's talking about a very in depth analysis of characters okay when we look around i'm sure you take inspiration from people around as well right so uh, uh, what are the things that one should note while observing people are is there a rule book is there a kind of a guide which says to be able to build a character these are 10 things you should know these are 20 things you should observe and then keep them in mind while reproducing characters something like that available or done uh, not i i wouldn't say rule uh, but yeah it has to something has to flag off in your head some bulb has to turn on when you when a writer finds or hears something interesting okay for example uh, Uh, there's this friend of mine called suraj suraj one day told me about a guy uh, who used to live near his house in, in another town in some small town in kerala this guy when he was a small ch- so this guy sells lottery tickets okay he sells lottery tickets his shirt is always open and there is a big scar on his tummy and that's how he goes around with that cycle selling lottery tickets so the thing is this <laughs> one day suraj understood they got to know the story behind this guy apparently when he was a child he picked up his father as a carpenter so he picked up a bunch of nails okay his mother saw those and said hey paramu when when she said that he got scared and he swallowed all the nails so the paramu swallowed all the nails 14 nails to be exact so everyone said he is going to die and then they rushed him to a hospital and he came out he was okay they operated on him and came out but ever since people have been telling him paramu you are very lucky paramu you are very lucky you are lucky to be alive you are lucky lucky like so much of lucky he started selling lottery tickets <laughs> okay. 
so now if you dismiss this as a lottery vendors thing then you wouldn't have got this right so i plagiarized the story as is in one of my novels <laughs> okay so that's what i think there's a difference between literature and gossip right you just talk loose talk is not observing or uh, it's discussing it's just talk but knowing how to get the valid points about characterization is part of the art of writing very interesting question back to the audience do you remember observing a very interesting quirky person apart from this uh, not this sorry apart from an author who has a very interesting hairstyle any character that you remember observing in your lifetime ever somebody who at just one glance you tend to remember even today anybody even a film character is okay i'm sure many times a film character a stage character a model a teacher an acquaintance a neighbor anybody do you remember yes munna bhai very interesting not sir kid but munna bhai very interesting so he remembers munna bhai wonderful anybody else a character that you remember don't you remember any of your teachers yeah oh interesting a cute grandpa yeah. very nice yeah? yeah so ruskin bond okay anybody else like he said he observed a lottery wala did you observe anybody a rickshaw wala doodh wala anybody in any quirky thing yes in karnataka which in turn she knew its ancestry which again originated in rajasthan wow so that was a story that i you know just like got to know about that yes. uh, just this bracelet perfect basically. perfect recipe for an interesting story absolutely yeah. absolutely something like this anything else anybody has come up with yeah yeah <laughs> antithesis very nice very good interesting yes once while walking around this area called ajni right there's a new bridge i bumped into a person who was on a wheelchair and he was having a pomeranian with him uh, had a good chat with him ended up going to his place as well um, later i got to know that every evening around 4 4:35 pm this person would actually take the dog on the wheelchair to uh, poop at one particular location near a garden <laughs> oh that's nice that's wonderful so wheelchair and the pomeranian dog oh great nice I used to play basketball a couple of years ago, and I played that like for continuously five years or something. So there's this, I mean, जो रास्ते से जाना पड़ता है, there's this uncle, very old, wearing shorts, sleeveless, those those vests, uh, hmm. sports shoes, and he walks like them slowly, 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 but maintains the same pace. Five years, every day I see him doing uh, going for a walk, and then. Uh, a year ago a year ago i was i was going through through that route i had to meet a friend and i saw that uncle walking again like he walks every day the same face the same clothes it's very interesting yes that's beautiful see the thing is that it need not really be something that somebody else would also find like everyone doesn't look at that uncle right he's just walking along so uh, it's it's great that you he caught your eye sometimes life you know presents itself like a painting to you so there's no deeper meaning or anything necessary to kind of draw you in you then you take the plunge later if you know what i'm saying for example i once saw a similar scene there was this very old uh, grandma beggar woman okay she's a she was actually begging for a living there she's crossing a very busy street then i saw in one hand she's holding an ice cream cone <laughs> that's all must have gone and begged in some ice cream thing and he would have given that maybe but a full ice cream cone not something that somebody has thrown away and she is crossing the road holding that balance so what's the meaning of this i don't know if you were a painter you would go home and paint it if you are a writer think you know it it just that might be the start of something another line of thinking think about this again when you observe people your inherent biases start playing in your mind without even you realizing you start either judging people you may not speak that out but you judge them internally in your mind either the way of dressing their way of talking their hairstyle okay and, or anything else at all and when you start 
realizing that you're judging people and if you ask yourself why did i judge you'll get very interesting answers and that also is a good input for your writing process absolutely okay so before we move on to the other parts any questions on plot or characters so far this is not going to be a boring lecture one way we would love questions from you if at all okay so before I, yeah there's a question there ram ram sir welcome to nagpur ram ram thank you okay. uh, so like my question is like how do you not write like um like for most of the writers writing is their life as they said so how do you stop your this how do you stop this habit how do you stop this urge of not writing where like do you think there is a point in some some writers life that you think okay this is enough this is making me insane i just need to stop do you think it is a good thing or a bad thing or a person should have that or a writer should have that deep one i know <laughs> i was thinking myself among us yeah uh <laughs> now here i'll have to draw a line about how honest can i be <laughs> see what's the logical root of writing maybe it goes down into some depth then it starts getting dark inside your head and then it goes to a level where uh, there's some form of insanity you know being harbored over there so uh, do you really go that far there is really no answer it's a it's a choice there are people who have gone mad right there's a, a woman who fried her head inside an oven silvia plath have you heard of her yeah, yeah so she went on write, writing about how she wanted to commit suicide uh, how she wanted to kill herself and stuff and uh, so people must have said oh, she keeps saying this you know finally she went and did it so uh, honestly i am not a parent figure here saying no don't go there take care of yourself it's your choice so uh, in my case uh you won't believe it uh, you you can sit down please uh there's one uh, doctor friend of mine a lady doctor she is in london now she called me one day and said uh, uh, what are you doing nowadays so i said i'm writing or oh, that same crap that you used to write <laughs> so i said uh, yeah, kind of and then i said yeah but i'm improving you know uh, i don't think so so i'm like oh my god why are you scared she's asking me why are you scared what are you scared of so i said the uh, the thing that you were asking you know uh, when i go to a certain depth i i don't know if i am going to be able to i mean i'm <laughs> going to go into depression I, i keep writing funny stuff it's humor that i write largely so uh, so th- she said yeah that's what so you have one life don't be f- don't be afraid just go just go <laughs> wherever you want to go that's what i wa- called you for from london i'm calling you just to tell you this then then i said yeah but uh, after my uncle passed away after my dog passed away i felt very sad i have been in grief go see a counselor go see a shrink i i'll give you a shrink's number i said no no shrink is psychiatrist right so uh, go see a doctor so i said no 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 i, I no no they'll they'll <laughs> spoil it all no no <laughs> this is fine so she said yeah but you have to come out of it and write maybe the writing is what is going to help if you write that stuff meaning not not the same thing same crap that i've been writing but something really deep so i think uh, it's a very good question that you have asked but it is a definitely a personal choice how deep and how far you want to go is there a topic that you don't you won't touch like a wound you know something that happened in your childhood i am a writer i write this i write that i write, but that no that i won't write maybe it's therapeutic if you write i don't know and also see too much of anything is bad there has to be a balance about everything so there are times when and this is very common among a lot of authors they flip over for for them at that point what is real and what is fictional starts becoming gray you know that is a risky area that is where you start playing with your own mind telling yourself and convincing yourself what i write is real and the world around me is fictional so that has to be a very carefully uh, you know worked out place yes. coming to con- uh, coming to characters again a very interesting part of characters is something called a conflict right so manu what is your view on a conflict in a character and how do you deal with it to my mind i think a, a conflicted person can be a writer no one else <laughs> so a person who is too clear in the head will do something better than writing <laughs> you know might become an executive somewhere or 
sit in a bank or something why would you be a writer you know so uh, writing comes from conflicts so you you it's it's like rubbing rocks together the sparks for the sparks to come out that's the only way this doesn't mean you sit and get conflicted on your own but <laughs> it, it should come naturally so uh, i have always been conflicted all my life i have had my own conflicts you know my own addictions de addictions relationship issues is that everything so i think uh, that is what makes me a writer now a very pleasant writer is a possible phenomenon maybe but i don't know any the writers i know there's another writer uh, who was there uh, with me in advertising is a crazy guy so uh, and and the craziness is born of inner conflicts so uh, for one thing when there's a conflict enjoy it don't try to just resolve it too soon okay they are precious <laughs> so that's what i think about conflicts so how many of you understand the concept of conflict but yeah so to summarize conflict essentially is always the core of a character the strength and the power of a character is built on conflict even the happiest man that you can see in front could be sad and deep in it the source of your emotion your power is your conflict and conflict could be positive or negative as she said so find out the conflict that builds a person for example okay a person all through his or her childhood might have been bullied that's a conflict that's an inherent conflict that they've built they will actually be an insecure person for all you know in future and this insecurity is what you are looking for in the character okay a person could actually be a uh, body shamed all their life that inherent need to justify their body to the external world becomes the conflict of being accepted so that's how you build a very strong character around yes. okay so due to the paucity of time i'll first open for questions and then take up the rest of the things with manu yes is there any mental error just to uh, boost the critical thinking that's something like a author's block or writer's yeah, block yeah you are yeah. talking about yeah. a writer's block right yes don't write uh, you do you're not in the mood you do, you just feel this it's it, it sometimes freezes that happens to me too so uh, initially i used to wonder so it's uh, you know uh, it's uh, you are uh, in a hurry to do something and but then you just can't and your life is miserable because you're not writing but calm down just leave it just leave it be it comes back after some time yeah yes to the students i would say the substances drinking smoking uh, drugs those kinds of things because there is still though we are very old i think even today uh, there is this thing among writer people especially beginners that you know we should do these things i have met a lot of people who say that that's how you are wild to go in order to go wild you have to do these things but i think the problem is that they destroy you so there's nothing remaining for you to exercise in order to write so i meant by addictions substances like that a healthy addiction is good if you are addicted to walking it's nice but i don't know if you would call it addiction in that way one more question over here yeah what? i have been an alcoholic so i was an alcoholic about uh, 15 years or no more than that maybe about 20 years ago uh, and i was in fact treated so i had to be uh, i had to go see a psychiatrist for uh, uh, two years almost i was on medication there are a lot of things that i understood with that experience so that is where i'm coming from next question there uh, but sir right uh, but what if uh, the conflict is so deep that uh, it's hard to even begin uh, or uh, you know even if you begin uh, your stuff is such that you're conflicted is it you know is it the way you want to write or not then you must write you absolutely must write the preaching don't be in a hurry but i would say uh, okay i am going to none of that josh is going to work let it simmer inside you but i would say remove your you should be able to remove yourself a little from the wound in order to actually sit down and write so maybe time can do that to you yes but then again like how uh, like how long will it take to actually come down by never losing sight of the thing that you will write about it one day okay 
don't don't decide for example that this is something too touchy for me this is too painful so uh, i am going to just give up this thing of writing no i will not write let it be i will never write about this don't do that always tell yourself not falsely meaningfully that you are going to approach this topic in fact it could be the goal of your life okay. you look at dostoevsky his father was killed with a uh, vodka bottle shoved down his throat okay and he wrote about parricide in his final brothers karamazov the greatest work ever if you ask me uh, the greatest uh, most towering uh, work of fiction in world literature so he wrote it at last finally he was taken to be executed okay the tsar uh, dostoevsky himself was taken to be shot and at the last moment he was forgiven an experience like that he has not explored so fully okay this is what he did finally so you know one more point i'd like to add over here um uh, we as indians are not taught to be courageous and face our problems we are taught to push it down the carpet yeah okay be it as it may the only way forward is through it if you start getting your problems putting them as a pile and say too touchy i don't want to go down the route it is not going to help you sooner or later you will have to face them so buck up drink a cup of black coffee tell yourself it is going to be painful mightily painful but i have to do it today or tomorrow sit through it run through it once you run through it uh, one single time you will know what is the experience then you will know how to manage yourself better to have that experience again and again that's how you manage pain isn't that why we write yeah. absolutely okay that's cathartic you. for you that's like okay let me get done with it. it's like telling a friend you have something bubbling within you and you tell them maine bol diya i'm done okay yes uh well i'll go with this gentleman he was next yes does the current state of your emotion change you or deviate you from your story line if it does so how do you uh, fixate your story or do you deviate from your story line what Very is your experience question. regarding it happens all the time <laughs> so uh, the first thing that you must do is not take an advance from your publisher <laughs> 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 because he's going to call oh novel ka kya hua are you done i hope you're working you know that's going to put pressure so uh, uh, so yeah to answer your question there are two things that can happen the incident or the situation is negative with respect to writing or positive with respect to writing sometimes i would change the plot entirely because of this if it is positive it's okay you know don't fall in love with what you are you have already done to the extent that you will compromise what you're going to write next it's okay just backspace you know where you need to delete delete because you've come across something even that's a whole adventure of writing but if it's a negative thing uh, if it is disturbing you you, are, you sit down to write and you can't concentrate it happens to me sometimes when uh, when i read yesterday's writing i've made spelling mistakes so i i absolutely hate that and then i know that i'm my mind is not in it so it's it's equivalent of the writer's block get back get a, get away from there go take a walk play with your dogs whatever else just don't write at that time. or go watch a movie so, yes yes next question yeah over here i'll come there yes both of you how would you basically differentiate between the mentality of a person who writes stories and the mentality of a person who writes poetry no difference Why should there be difference? I don't see any difference. Huh? I think it is the it's expression. That's all. It's, it's a mode of expression. expression. They, you're expressing. You can to express yourself, your ideas. You can sing. You can dance. You can write. Okay. You can sing classical. You can sing western. Yes. Okay. You can sing Bollywood. Similarly, you can write poetry. You can write fiction. You can write paragraph, short stories, Twitter stories, anything. It's a form of expression. Whatever suits your, whatever gives you the best expression. whatever is comfortable for you that's it how to find out what would be more comfortable for a right person right more try it out you yes. find your comfort zone automatically absolutely yes this okay we'll come here and then go there so uh, i know there's no hard and fast answer to this question but uh, as you talked about the conflict right let's say there's a bully um uh, and then it leads to their experience or the rest of their life so while writing a novel wanted your take on uh how exactly would you you know uh, build their story and what point of time would you reveal 
okay this is what happened in their life you how mean would you conflict go about in it? fiction in in what i'm writing in in, in, in the plot novel yeah see it it depends if you want to surprise the reader i would keep it to a later stage sometimes there is a twist coming but i don't want the reader to feel you know this guy who is writing it thinks it's a humongous surprise or something you know then i would reveal it initially itself i wouldn't try to surprise him unless it is surprising enough when i say him i mean her also huh? it's i am not woke at all <laughs> too old to be woke that's a problem <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah conflict will be revealed or or a twist in the tale would be revealed in the end if it's worth it but if it's not such a great twist i would just open it up before itself in order to not appear to be maximizing on something which is not worth no, turn around this way so this one interesting part about his books very quirky very interesting good looking covers okay since he's based in kerala a lot of uh, that reflects in his book but do pick up some of his books there one